Well, welcome, Mr. Paulus, to the commission meeting. <laughs> what do you mean it's get up so early? Yeah, it's like 10 o'clock in the morning, but uh, it's February 2nd, uh, 2023. Uh, it's a regular board session, and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's great. Okay. Uh, Commissioner, ready? Sure. Please bow. Dear Lord, please help to uh, guide us and give us your wisdom here as we go to discuss uh, business, finances, property, personnel, and issues facing our great county here in Seneca. Uh, please help us uh, work together for the betterment of our citizens. Always do your will. Amen. Amen. All right. Roll call. Commissioner Paradiso? Here. Commissioner Schaff? Here. Commissioner Franker? Here. So at this time, I will accept a motion to approve the digital audio recording of our previous board session on Thursday, January 26th. That was our regular board session. So moved. Second. We have a first and second. Roll call. Commissioner Franker? Yes. Commissioner Schaff? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Thank you. So, first on the agenda today, uh, we have the uh, fire chief from Faustoria. I'll let you do the introduction. Uh, who's retiring tomorrow. It's your last day, right, Chief? Yes, sir. And it's just really a pleasure to uh, have you here to be recognized for everything you've done. Uh, not only for the city of Faustoria, but just in cooperation with the whole county. Uh, it's just uh, so many good stories over there. So with that, if you would like to come forward, uh, Commissioner Schuff will uh, read a proclamation and then we can have some discussion. <laughs> Thank you. So we have a proclamation here for Faustoria Fire Chief Brian Herbert. Thank you for your service. Whereas the Seneca County Board of Commissioners would like to extend its heartfelt appreciation to Faustoria Fire Chief Brian Herbert for his outstanding service and commitment to the Faustoria Fire Division over the past 30 years. As the Chief of the Division since 2018, he has made a lasting impact on our community through his leadership and positive changes to the station. And whereas Chief Herbert's dedication to creating a positive and fun work environment for the division is admirable, and his hiring of close to 20 individuals has greatly strengthened the department. The Board of Commissioners also recognizes his role in the growth and development of countless other members of the department. And whereas Chief Herbert embarks on his well-deserved retirement, the Board of Commissioners wishes him all the best in future endeavors, including his role as a contractor instructor with the University of Finley and his plans to travel and spend time with family. Whereas the Board of Commissioners hopes that the next Fire Chief of Faustoria will maintain the high standards set by Chief Herbert and continue to attract and employ individuals with a positive mindset, keeping the department and the city moving in the right direction. And whereas the Board of Commissioners would like to express its gratitude to Chief Herbert for his contributions and to the community members who support the department and the city. We are proud to have Chief Herbert as a leader in our county and we wish him a happy and fulfilling retirement. Now therefore be it resolved, the Seneca County Board of Commissioners hereby officially recognize Faustoria Fire Chief Brian Herbert for his hard work, dedication over the decades, and public service. On behalf of the citizens of Seneca County, we sincerely thank Chief Herbert for his contributions to his department, his city, and his community. Uh, witness whereof we, the Seneca County Board of Commissioners, have hereunto set our hand to this proclamation this second day of February in the year of our Lord, 2023, Commissioners William Franker, Anthony Paradiso, and Tyler Schuff. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. it certainly was uh, unexpected when uh, emailed me yesterday emailed me yesterday and asked me to stop by it's uh, I appreciate the the, the thought um, for the work that our department has done I wouldn't obviously wouldn't be able to do it with the guys that work underneath me so I greatly appreciate it thank you for thank that. you yep. well, thank you appreciate a quick photo. Sure. 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 love to have you Jimmy help yeah us. how do you want to get the chairs out of the way and just okay. uh, put him in the middle and we'll Go from there. Cool, cool. Thanks for coming, Chief. Yeah, appreciate it, man. We're good. Yeah, go ahead and do Kayla first. Yeah, She'll look her away. Hold on. Make sure I got everything centered. Yep. Okay. Hold on. I'm holding it crooked. There we go. One, two, three. 
I noticed Beautiful. sometimes like two people are looking one way, two people are looking one way. Might as well take our time when we do this right. So, all right, guys, three, two, one. Three, two, one. All right, thanks, guys. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Appreciate, Appreciate it. Appreciate your service. Have, Thank have, you. have, have a good trip. Enjoy your retirement. Thank you. Yeah. Heading out west, that's pretty, pretty good. Yep. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, next we have a report uh, from our mental health and recovery services. Uh, welcome, Mayor the floor is yours. If you want to introduce yourself and your team, you have the floor. Yes, Thank good you. morning. Uh, Mir Chahandru, Mental Health and Recovery Service Board, Seneca, Ottawa, Sandusky, and Wynda counties. I do have three board members in the audience, Tony Polus, Selinda Schurger, and Dee Frankart, which are also board members of our organization. Well, so, uh, thank you. I do have, which Kayla, I do have this for you as okay. well. I'll, okay. give, I'll give you my package. Okay, thank you. Um, but in your package, I, uh, I provided the fiscal year 2022 annual report. Um, I'm not going to highlight that today, but, but you guys could highlight that. And I also have a little summary report, a uh, one-pager. I have a few extra copies for the public if they need, uh, they need to see that. Um, but I do want to highlight a few things. So uh, January 2nd of this year, which is probably fairly important for our organization, actually very important for our organization, Governor DeWine signed House Bill 66 into law, uh, which will be effective in 90 days. Uh, is really clarifying our local levies that we collect in the four counties after the merger with Ottawa County. The merger took place October 1st of 2021. So it's really clarifying our organization being able to renew or replace levies in all four counties as, as before. Um, it was a little bit of a gray area in the law. We weren't sure, especially if we can continue to collect the Ottawa County levy fund. So we are able to do that. It's, it's important for you guys, commissioners, to know in the public, we do not mix county levies uh, as a board. So. Any, any dollar collected in Seneca County will stay to help Seneca County residents. Any funds collected in Ottawa County will stay with Ottawa County. So I want to make sure that you guys and the public understand that. So really thankful. Uh, both Representative Click and Senator Ryan Klee were co-sponsors of the bill. So we really received a lot of support and, and we were able to get that done. So we were a, a portion of that bill, uh, not the entire bill, it's, it's for our uh, tax levy. <clears throat> Another update is the local mobile crisis response team. Uh, we implemented the mobile crisis response team in Seneca County July 1 of 2022. I know they are active uh, with all first responders across the county. Um, actually, I'm, I'm reading the police reports daily and you can see them being called almost every day to various uh, cases throughout the county. So really happy they are housed at the Seneca County Sheriff's Office. Uh, we have a team of two right now that they cover Seneca County. If, if we need another team, uh, somebody from Sandusky or Ottawa will, will come down. So we do have uh, three teams that cover our four county district. Uh, they operate 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Monday to Friday, uh, and they do follow-ups. <coughs> so what I mean by follow-ups, they look at the police reports, and if an incident happened while they were off, that's the first thing they're going to follow up in the morning. Uh, they are called to... Uh, they are calling the community to, to answer to incidents by, by law enforcement through the 911 system. So really want to thank the chiefs and, and Sheriff Stevens uh, being a, a big part of getting this done. And I know it's very beneficial to Seneca County at this time. So okay. I do have a little update about the One Ohio Recovery Foundation. Um, some of you guys were in attendance yesterday. We had our regional meeting at our board office with eight counties in Region 17. Um, as you guys know, I sit on the One Ohio Recovery Foundation Board. We're now at a statewide meeting next week. Uh, probably uh, what, what, what people should know is everybody's expecting the loss of funds to come to Seneca County, correct? Well, the timeline is that most likely no funds will be distributed until October of this year. So kind of that's the, that's the timeline right now. Tomorrow we have a Seneca County Recovery Task Force meeting. Uh, which is our hub group to actually look at some potential projects for this opioid loss of funds to be utilized. Uh, it could be a partnership with any other county in the region. There are eight counties in our region, or it could be a single county project, but, but most likely we are looking at maybe some regional projects. Uh, I also have my, on my agenda discussion about the, the regional jail concept 
and the reason, the reason I'm jumping into that, that potentially could be a, a one Ohio maybe project, uh, you know, in the future. Um, as you guys know, we, we met with Sandusky and Ottawa about the concept of a regional jail that, that includes or, or is really focusing on, on mental health clients or individuals struggling with addiction. Uh, as we know um, from the report we see from Lucas <coughs> County at the last meeting, it, this can be a very really lengthy process. So we are looking for solutions, maybe short-term solutions, that maybe no regional jails, but maybe a crisis stabilization unit to, to assist law enforcement to drop off individuals who struggle with both mental illness and addictions. And, and again, that's something that maybe the one Ohio or Seneca County Recovery Task Force can look at. Uh, we're gonna explore that in the next few months. I'll keep you guys updated. Uh, the foundation meets monthly, our local region meets quarterly at this time. So commissioners, you guys will be informed and uh, I'll invite you guys to all the meetings. As I mentioned, the Seneca County Recovery Task Force, they meet once a month. Their next meeting is tomorrow. They meet the first Friday of each month. Uh, a very good group of community leaders getting together, really looking at the addiction problem in Seneca County. Um, grateful for that group to continue to move forward. Um, we are looking now with some data. Uh, I don't have that with you to, to provide that today, but early we're looking at overdose and suicide data throughout the county and see what we can do to make an impact. Um, we, are, we are hoping to schedule the fatality review meeting here soon. Um, I'll talk with the health commissioner probably again early next week after tomorrow's meeting and, and we're gonna probably have to call a meeting uh, in the month of February. Um, another very important thing about the recovery task force that the public should know and you guys should know, our PV drug recovery docket was also approved during the lame duck general assembly as permanent. So while PV one was created, was a five year pilot project, now it's permanent. Again, again uh, great kudos to Senator Reinecke for helping us and obviously Josh Schaff, Josh Kelby for, for getting behind this. Uh, last, I do have a little bit of a housing report. I try to highlight a few things every time I come. So in your report, um, I have a little housing report and I want you guys and the public to know we have, in Seneca County, we have one recovery house for males. That's a 10 bed facility. We have one women recovery house. That's a seven bed facility. We have another women's seven bed facility house that's projected to open July 1 of this year, or hopefully before that. And we have two mental health group home facilities in Seneca County. Uh, one, it's an eight hour supervision, 13 beds. That's a co-ed facility. And we have another mental health group home that's 24 seven supervision. That's a 16 bed co-ed facility. Um, I also put a little report regarding the women and the men recovery houses in Seneca County. Just some interesting facts. For women, in the last six months, the number one substance of choice was meth. Um, we served eight unduplicated individuals in the last six months. The age category with the most resident serve is 26 to 35 year old. Uh, we were 86% bed capacity. Residents, when it comes to the lease that we have with them in the women facility, they pay 100% of their rent. Uh, so that's great <coughs> success. And throughout, since we opened the facility, the average length of days stay per client, 302 days. So that's, well, yeah. you can see it's a lengthy, I wanna make sure everybody understands. For our recovery homes, we don't have a length of stay, stay set. As long as the individuals do well, they pay rent, they stay sober, they go to treatment, they have a job, they can stay there until they are ready to move to their next phase. For the men house, the number one substance <coughs> of choice were opioids. opioids. Uh, we had 19 individuals serve unduplicated. Same age group, 26 to 35, were uh, the age group with the most individuals serve. Were 88% bed capacity, 76% of rent paid, and length of stand for the male were 223 days. So it's still you know, fairly significant. I realize I have a spelling error on the report, <laughs> but... Uh, <coughs> Do you, you have to be 18 and older? You do have to be 18 and older, yes. Now, uh, we, we are hoping to open uh, the second recovery house prior to July 1. We will do an invite for, for you guys to come. Um, it's not that we don't promote it to the public, but we try to protect the residents a little bit. Um, that facility could be, could be in the future uh, able to serve mother, mothers with children. So we are maybe looking at that in the near future. So thank you, Commissioner Paradiso, for bringing it up. I know that sometimes is a challenge 
there are some individuals or clients that would like to access services, but they have a young one and they can bring them to the home at this time. It's a tough situation. Any, uh, any questions? Yeah, any questions? Just a quick question. So the other day, so my kids at school, they just had a suicide awareness uh, consultation and stuff on that uh, for the whole schools and stuff. And what is our suicide rate in Seneca County? Do you have any ballpark numbers or on that? Or? So it's something we collected for, for the last 10 years, and I remember Commissioner Schaff asked, asked a similar question last time. Um, I, I don't have last year data yet. Um, we are, um, it, you guys probably know, I, I asked from you a few weeks ago. So you guys passed a resolution last March, actually on March 10th, to establish a suicide and fatality, suicide and overdose fatality review committee. Okay. So that was passed in the last budget by law. The commissioners can assign that. You guys chose to assign that. Before we had what I call unofficial meetings. Now the law is kind of protecting us and giving us immunity to continue to have these meetings. Uh, we just didn't set up the meeting to review 2022 that's yet. So uh, something again we'll discuss tomorrow, the opiate te recovery task force and I'll, I'll keep you guys posted, but we are planning and hoping <coughs> to schedule that this month. What's the, the committee wise? Who's, yeah, how, how do you see the committee? Or so that? It's, it's something that by law has to be organized by the health commissioner. So uh, I'll be back in touch with, with Commissioner Goon. Um, but there are mandated members that have to sit on the committee. For example, the Mental Health and Recovery Service Board, the county sheriff. Um, I think we are the only three that are mandated to sit on it. Sure. County coroner, it's invited, but if he or she decided to come, it's kind of up to them. But we have a list of other recommendations. Okay, very good, thank you. Thank you. Good work. Okay. Good Thanks for coming in. I guess, yeah, no, no further questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I want to commend your board for serving. Yes. A lot of meetings, a lot of time. Um, Thank you. Yeah, and uh, you guys just do great work. I don't think people understand, Mayor, so the, all the moving parts that and all the collaboration that you have to go through with various funding and, and cooperation with all the different state, federal agencies. I see Chief nodding and some of the board members. He does a great job. It's, it's just, you know, it's just appreciated. So keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? We're good. Moving on. Uh, commissioner reports. At this time, we probably will be another 20 minutes, our meeting, maybe 30. You're welcome to stay. But if you want to leave, you can leave. We're going to go right into our business. So that's up to you guys. Chief, you're retired, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to be the only one to stay on the leave. Appreciate that. Yeah. Good luck. This, Thank is, you. this is your opportunity. Start waxing that Harley. Hey, yeah. thank you again. God bless you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'll jump into commissioner reports. Uh, commissioner Shaw? Sure. Um, it's been a busy week here this week. Um, I'll save some meat and potatoes of this for Commissioner Paradiso's report, but we did meet with Don Bala from RCM Architects this week. Um, so the commissioners were looking at potential different floor plans as we go to put up some of these EMS buildings across the county to improve our service response times and uh, quality of service, but um, very productive meeting with them and just kind of weighing out all options, trying to get best bang for the buck at this point. Um, also, we have a uh, joint ambulance district meeting here tonight at seven o'clock. Oh, uh, correct. The, it's been changed. It's all uh, is in the calendar. Okay. It is. It is. It is. Good. I'm glad you brought it up, but it's canceled. So we can make sure we get that out, Jimmy. And Kayla, I think you know it's going to be the third Thursday of the month uh, until we change, until it's changed. And this is the joint EMS district, not the commissioner meeting. I'm glad you brought that up because they were meeting on the first and third. And our office still has it on there. So I said that. We're good? Okay. I go by I go by my calendar. Yeah, no, that's right. We never change it, so thank you. Please. Speaking of calendar, I'm glad you're here today, Mayor Chaw. Um, in our calendar, we don't have our recovery service meeting on there, but I will be there tomorrow at noon. So um, I don't know where we're having a cal calendar malfunction, but no, we'll get it ironed out. Um, Farm Bureau public policy uh, breakfast here coming up February 7th, uh, 8.30 at the fairgrounds. Then also we have budget commission, budget commission on Monday. 
um, a lot of a lot of things, a lot of moving pieces here last week or two. But um, just wanted to talk to the commissioners here as kind of part of my report. Um, as we all know, there was a fatality on South 53 here uh, this week. Um, this seems to be an ongoing thing. I know I've had a lot of emails, calls, concerns from residents about the dangers on South 53. I don't have the exact statistics in front of me right this second, but I know it's one of the more dangerous uh, highways in the state as far as fatalities go, population, but I'm sure Jimmy and I can do some research on that. I just, I think we need to start working with ODOT or get them down here and get some answers because I mean, it's obviously an issue. Um, it's affecting people's lives. Um, we need to reach out to our state officials and get some sort of group put together here where we can talk to ODOT or have more direct connection with them. Yeah, and just, you want to take the lead on that? Yeah. yeah um, with ODOT. We support it, Jimmy. Yeah, we can work together on that. Uh, I know uh, Lenny's out that way, Klaus, his company, uh, what's he on? Six? No. 98. One of those roads that come out in the 53 and he's got it a lot of uh, input too so I just gets gets kind of frustrating you sit there and you see the ODOT projects each month of what they're working on it's Hancock County it's Wood County that's all great but you look at Seneca County and we got a roundabout like I, I don't know how we can get them to see that we need some help down here with the safety of our roads as well but um, when you start working with our state officials yeah, we need to get in front of them it just and if you, that would be good if you start that so I would say uh, Commissioner Zoller did a lot of that when he was here, and Commissioner Kirshner brings it up, brought it up all the time. And we tried, COVID kind of set a lot of us back. But there's a new director in Bowling Green at ODOT. Um, and I think uh, Mark is, Zimmerman talks to. Yeah. But you, you are. That's a good point, and we need to make some noise and and build that relationship with Bowling Green. Yeah, we we all support that. Really, we all could do it. Right, and that's what I think. They usually come in, and um, every summer we need to be prepared for. They come in annually. And, yeah, but just we can get March. up there and right. talk to them if there are needs. And I think that's that's a good idea, actually. That, that's how, normally that's what they're going. That's how they do it. They're going to look at uh, accident data, mm -hmm. and um, the more there is, the more attention we're going to get. So. Uh, I don't want to see anybody else get hurt or no. lose their life. It's I just good. it's yeah, it's getting frustrated. That's the end of my report. No. So uh, was able to uh, speak at the Faustoria Rotary the other day. Had a uh, uh, good attendance and it was uh, a lot of good people and stuff on that. I really enjoyed that. Uh, kind of bring them up to date what's happening here in the commissioner's office and uh, kind of a little bit of question and answer and and uh, enjoyed that time out there. Uh, uh, the other night, my wife and I, so uh, we're 4-H advisors, so we spend a couple hours uh, every year. We have to do an annual training to be 4-H advisors and and uh, uh, did that and and uh, uh, went through. And uh, so Tuesday, uh, Commissioner uh, uh, Schwoko and myself from, from Sadusi County, we was down to State House for the State of State address and uh, Gary uh, Click, we th thank him for getting us the tickets and uh, kind of leading us around out that way. And then we, uh, you know, was able to visit with uh, uh, Senator Reinecke, and we end up back in, in uh, Senator Reinecke's office and having a great conversation. Uh, actually, Dr. Felton and his wife was there, and uh, uh, so it was a, a great day, I tell you. It was uh, a lot of energy down there, and it was uh, a, a lot of fun, so we really enjoyed our, our time down there. Uh, that, that's Adam's old <coughs> office. They actually moved offices. They moved. They yep. did move. They so did I have not been in the new now. office. Right. Okay. So, yep. They moved out, they moved. Uh, yeah. But that, that's... Um, that's a great experience. Oh, I'm definitely. Glad, I'm yeah. glad we were represented. So yeah, that's it was good. Definitely, yeah. Uh, the other day was out to, out to the one Ohio with Tony uh, meeting. Uh, uh, had the OSS uh, solid waste board meeting yesterday. Uh, and on Tuesday, they're going to have a policy meeting starting at uh, 2 o'clock for the open comment. And then uh, we'll have something posted about uh, and then 3 o'clock the actual. Uh, meeting on that so I think Jimmy's going to work on getting something uh, out, of, out and about on that. Uh, met with Sharon uh, George with uh, Children and Family First uh, group yesterday to kind of learn that's one of the committees that I'm sitting on to kind of learn about that uh, uh, group and what all that they do what all they're in, in, uh, involved with so it's uh, quite an interesting endeavor there that they're um, had regional planning meeting last night uh, uh, from 
about an hour or so, and, and uh, Charlene gave us an update on what's happening uh, with regional planning and kind of what their uh, future goals are uh, looking like there. Uh, this morning had uh, uh, met down at WTTF with our new uh, EMS director, Don Bala, uh, to introduce him to the county. So uh, uh, we did a, a few minute uh, uh, talk and uh, looking forward next week. Uh, Don starting on Monday. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. So looking forward with his experience coming into the county and uh, uh, leading our EMS directions. And uh, I think a lot of great things are going to be happening with him at the helm. So that's all I have. Oh, one more thing I do have. Yeah, so we did get this this morning. Uh, for Seneca County 4-H opportunity, they're having an open house Sunday, February 12th from 4 to 5 p.m. Uh, out to Sentinel Career Technology Center. So any youth, uh, the age of 5 to 18, uh, their families are interested in joining 4-H, uh, come on out and learn. And uh, again, I was participating in 4-H for 10 years, been a 4-H advisor for 27 years after that. So. Uh, it's a really great experience for kids to be involved in working with any projects and that's kind of the scope of how 4-H has changed over the years. You know, you always thought of farms and livestock projects, but I tell you it's really changed from, from you know, more household stuff, gardening, to and even the scope of the livestock, livestock projects have changed. I mean, you used to have a barn full of cattle, now it's a barn full of goats and stuff on that as you, know, you transition and, mm -hmm. you know, away from, you know, the full-time farms and stuff with that, but the kids are still having the opportunity to, you know, it takes as much work and everything to, to work with a goat as it does a pig or, you know, calf and stuff on that. So uh, anytime the kids are involved, it's, it's great for uh, opportunities like that. So. And touching on the, when we was down to the state of the state, I mean, that's where Governor Dwine really, you know, the first good portion of his speech was like trying to help fund, you know, a lot of youth activities and uh, with that. And I think we have a lot of good foundation of youth activities that, uh, you know, could help, uh, you know, benefit from some of that stuff, let alone creating any other, you know, bureaucracy and stuff on that. Let's, let's focus on what we have established and work from that <coughs> point then. So that's all I have. Good report. Good report. There's a, I believe there's over a thousand kids, mm -hmm. I'm going to say kids, uh, that are involved in 4-H in Seneca County. It's pretty impressive. Forty some chapters. Yep. Um, so, good. Well, when you go last, everybody, they steal the thunder. But, uh, <laughs> um, <coughs> echo everything, I think, in regards to the EMS building, just so everyone knows. Uh, it's a it's an absolute priority we're gonna <clears throat> we're trying to shorten and expedite the upfront process the best we can that's a fair statement so the architects sign off the bidding uh, we're, we're, we're rapid we're got the pedal down on that process then we will bid it out it'll be awarded and then at that point we'll have to it'll be a contractual thing with the contractor when we can build it and get it finished but you know our goal is to have the building up by the end of the year and um, um, it's going to be pushing it but it's still possible so more to come you'll be seeing a lot of that uh, uh, regarding the EMS building so good uh, county administrative report okay um, so vehicles have been a topic of conversation. Uh, Sheriff has, um, we've kind of talked back and forth on his need for vehicles. He sent over some information this week to me, so just wanted to bring it to you guys. Um, the Ford 150 that had been sitting at Reinecke, um, is has been sold. Um, and so he went out and did a little bit of digging into what would be available. Um, also the quickest because he does um, currently not have a single spare vehicle with everything that he has going on right now. They had a vehicle that was um, totaled December 2021 that is still um, not on the road yet due to equipment. Um, so therefore he did um, send me over some information. The cost for one vehicle um, that is equipped where he can get that is a Chevy Tahoe Police Pursuit um, 4x4 package um, with the cage bumper, lights, sirens, etc. Uh, that total is uh, $57,650.50. That is for one. Um, in this email, I did forward that to you guys so you could read the details if you would like a little bit further. 
um, but he did request, uh, a, he has a very real need for five vehicles. Uh, I asked if I could use this email as a request for five, five vehicles, but I'd bring it in front of you guys uh, for further discussion on how you wanted to proceed with the vehicles for the Sheriff's Office, given they do need, have that need for vehicles. We've talked about the vehicle schedule. We are still getting that together. Um, but he does have several several vehicles on that list that obviously are high mileage need to be replaced. Our normal schedule is two a year. Mm -hmm. That's correct. He got one last year. Or was it two last year? I think those were... Um, well, last year, in 2021, get, yeah, yeah, so last year it was uh, in 2022, um, I he got we one, I, one. We received one, and I'm not sure. I'm not yeah. positive, but I, that may have been the approved vehicle from 2021. That though. Been, that yeah. sounds, so I think he got a total of four in 2021. Because then on his email here, he, <coughs> yeah, he, yeah. So <coughs> we received it in 2022. We, we've but been discussing vehicles for the sheriff for a long time. This right. is this is, you know, I think the sheriff's been patient. I think he's done a, a good job. We pulled him out of the budget. Uh, we weren't picking on the sheriff, but the county's position going forward is we're taking vehicles out of um, department budgets and we're creating vehicles, uh, a separate schedule for, um, in this case, vehicles, and then another separate category for computers and technology. Mm -hmm. So we, we took this out of his budget. Um, so we've got one coming that's not here. Am I reading this right? Yeah, there was a vehicle that was totaled, and he's still waiting for that because of equipment issues. So if we... Delays. If we approved, I'm throwing this out for discussion. Uh, and that know, was a replacement, just that, to be clear. That one's a replacement. This one is a replacement. There was a total vehicle. So if we... I'm going to throw out that we we get three of these five, three of the five. And we we try to get them as in this. Am I reading this right? They'll be in a four to f uh, four months. It would take two to four months, uh, yeah. give or take. Okay. So, looking at his schedule, um, I mean, he may not have received any in 2022. And in theory, if we went to two two, we would be, we would be talking four. He's got one coming. That's a replacement. Yeah, that's that's. Yeah, that was a newer vehicle that was totaled. So I have, I have some information from the meeting in September last year yeah. where we last talked about this. Just, uh, can I read it? Sure. Okay. Uh, September eighth, two thousand twenty-two. Commissioners agreed to fund a new truck for the sheriff's office. This vehicle was to replace a cruiser that was totaled in a car accident last year. Commissioners previously said they would not approve any supplemental budget request, but allowed an exception due to the circumstances of this situation. At that time, Commissioner Kirchner suggested a new vehicle should be subtracted from the number of vehicles in the 2023 budget for the Sheriff's Office. In a typical year, two, two are replaced. Uh, given this, the truck purchase this year will count against next year's allotment, meaning only one would be included in the budget for 2023. Obviously, you guys can change that, but I just wanted to remind yeah. you that that's well, what I we did a few months ago. That's why my head's at three, so I'm glad you brought that up. Just reminding you what we did three months yeah. ago. So, so uh, I'm good with three, mm -hmm. and we can we'll revisit this as we get our schedule. In. Yeah, I'll we'll get additional information. It. There's obviously, um, I'm um, pretty sure the, the 57. We'll, we'll do a it's the cost, but yeah, we will um, move forward with getting additional information. So just for of, we'll have to put the money in place. Jimmy, the one, uh, yeah, that's where the three of my yeah, head what, came. Reading this, it shows four zeros. What, yeah, what four you're saying is zeros the need's bigger than we thought. So a few months ago, we agreed to do this, but now we got to do more. Makes so sense. So if we approve, uh, we're going to discuss it and vote on three, unless you guys have a different idea and then uh, one's coming that's ordered and in, in the queue he just doesn't have it yet yeah. so he was that that's the, or, just or, or a replacement that's that's a, that is a not a vehicle yeah right. that's just an even swap out that vehicle really has nothing to do with his vehicle schedule mm -hmm. okay was, that's fair it was hit um, that is not just for the record can you read that again Jimmy yeah I mean like this was my kind of memory of it too is like at that time 
we were saying to all departments, we were not going to approve any supplementals. Like they needed to live within their budget. Okay. And then what, what you guys had decided at that time was, okay, we're going to make an exception to the rule. We will give you this extra one, but it's got to count for next year's. So it's got to subtract off next year's. That's what we said at that time. Again, the that needs change. Now. Yes. The yeah. needs change. You can change your decision, so obviously. This, this might not be right because his email may not exactly be right. We could be one off. Either way. So do we know in 22 how many he ended up? Because the way I'm hearing it, one was a replacement from an accident then, correct? In yeah. 22? Plus another one for 22. Do you, did, there was, mm -hmm. so I believe one additional, there's yeah. the replacement. I think you kind of take that out of the equation. And there was a second one that he was leasing for $0 that I think That's we agreed to purchase away. for this year, right? Yeah, but that went away. We, that, we didn't do that one. We didn't end up doing that one. So I guess two kind of. We had told him he was only going to get one vehicle in 23 instead of the two that we had on the list. Okay, so now for, we're giving two more than what we originally said. To bring us together, we're, we would be uh, approving three. That would be uh, uh, you could, any way you want to put the one, but according to the sheriff here, uh, the one that you talked about that we were going to lease, we never have. Never have it, yeah. That's the one that Ford sold and we never move forward with that. Right. That um, whether we're on schedule for three or four, we I'm not sure we're we're gonna resolve that to the exactly, but I'm good with three right now. Um, some part of this is this is very time sensitive. Uh, there's like a year wait if you order pickups. Yep. Yep. And and I want to try to move and help them out because these vehicles are available. At least they were a couple of days ago. They might not be available. The Tahoe's ready. That's. Uh, I mean, it's possible they won't be available. But there's there's a know? high need for them, so they yeah. needed to know so to, basically immediately because so there were other people that wanted. So I'll put a motion. A motion. I move yeah. that we go ahead and purchase three vehicles for the sheriff's department. Just a, I'll I'll second the motion, but I have a question. Once we're okay, we have first second discussion. I see we got. I see we have Chuck Boyer on. Just out of curiosity, what where are we yeah, sitting at sure. numbers wise as far as our fleet goes yeah, out there? And what, is, and what is our threshold as far as mileage goes for when they consider them out of service? Just for my own education. Miles wise, right now we are at twenty. With transport vehicles and everything, we're at uh, twenty-seven vehicles. And we're about an average of 101,000 miles on throughout those on average throughout all those vehicles. 101,000 average. When do you deem it um, not fit for service? Once it reaches 175,000 miles, 200,000. Like, what's kind of your threshold, or what's the your? Thoughts? Well, once the mechanic tells us that, uh, suggests that I wouldn't put that much money into a vehicle that has over 250,000. Uh, that's usually our cue to make a decision whether we're going to put the money into it or not. Um, I mean, right now we have a car at 216. Uh, yeah, so it just depends on the amount of service or amount of repairs put into the car. Like recently, we had a vehicle at 171,000. We put 2,800 dollars of repairs into it. Uh, but we needed the vehicle anyway, so that that determines the cost of the repairs. Thanks, Chuck. Yep. I guess further question, maybe if you can get us a list of the vehicles that you have and kind of with the top, you know, mileage and kind of ratchet down. We have that in-house. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. we'll with the mileage. Okay. Yeah. That'd be good information. So Chuck, I think where we're at is uh, the commissioners are commit. So we want to dig deeper in this whole vehicle thing and um, and, and put this on paper and, and plan maybe on a five-year schedule uh, what this vehicle rotation would look like. We're not there yet, okay? So we're, in my view, we're just, we're kind of reacting and, and just getting some cars out there for them uh, based on that two-a-year mentality, okay? And maybe three a year, maybe five up front and skip two years. I don't know how it's going to end up, but... Um, I know you guys have put some time and work in it, and we all just need to revisit it mm -hmm. um, with the new vehicles programmed in and take a look at this thing so we can get a little more detailed discussion and comfort as to when and how and why we're doing it, right? 
So we have a first and second for three. Um, and so I'll ask for a roll call. Commissioner Franker? Yes. Commissioner Schuff? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Are you going to leave the meeting and go call him right now? <laughs> I'm sure okay Chief is that? texting him. <laughs> okay, you can start texting, Chief. We'll, we'll get. Um, okay, moving on. Commissioner report. Anything else? Oh, I'm good. On my, my Any reports. old business? Okay, we'll jump into uh, new business. Uh, SUP apps. I have, a, I have um, several, actually. Um, I have uh, three for the general fund. Um, one is for $13,790.93 for the sheriff's office for inmate psychotropic medications. Um, again, for general fund um, contract service line for the treasurer to convert uh, to the new server of $8,000. And then I have, again, general fund um, professional services of uh, $29,000. Um, for the safe built contract that we'll be discussing further in the meeting. Um, I have 47,001 cent for the unclaimed fund trust. Um, this is basically a, a non-budgeted fund. So when somebody claims a check that is outdated, basically, um, it goes into an unclaimed fund account. And then when they claim that check, we pay it out of that unclaimed fund, and then we just request that that money be reimbursed into that fund so that it balances the fund out. Hmm. Okay. First time that's come up since I've been here. It'll happen more frequently now that the auditor's office has been able to They're actually to cycle them. that money into that unclaimed fund account. Okay. Um, then I also have um, for the concealed handgun licenses uh, fund $8,000 uh, in supplies for the sheriff's office. Um, I believe that might consist of like ammunition um, and other supplies that they would use um, for uh, maybe trainings or something like that. I think that fund pays for itself, right? Yeah, so usually it does. The, 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 yeah. That's not yeah, taxpayer money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's paid by mm -hmm. the fees of those concealed that carry. Concealed yeah. Care. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, I have the Seneca County Sewer District Replacement and Improvements Fund. For thirty thousand two hundred twelve dollars and forty cents, um, this is for software upgrades. Um, for all of it's for the upgrade for them going to do software for the sewer district. We approved it. Discuss it. This is just moving the money. Yep. So this money for public uh, benefit uh, is not uh, general fund taxpayer money. This comes out of those individuals that have sewer bills that pay into this sewer district we're taking money from there and uh, correct and it, it and it's split okay. over all of the districts in different it's dollar amounts mm -hmm. so it gets confusing because sometimes as a county really we're not in the sewer business but for example Bascom and New Regal they have sewer districts and this will go to the new billing system correct which uh, is gra gravely needed, and but we vetted it out and discussed. So mm -hmm. good. And the last one I have is for the Bascom Nurigal Bond Service Fund um, for seven thousand and sixty dollars. Um, this is just additional interest um, for the twenty twenty three USDA loan um, that was not included in the twenty three budget. And that's okay. all I have. I have a motion and make a motion that we accept the uh, supplemental appropriations as presented. I'll second the motion. Okay. Commissioner Frankert. Yes. Commissioner Chef. Yes. Commissioner Paradiso. Yes. Thank you. Nice job. Next. Okay. Uh, we have three resolutions today. The first resolution is authorizing a contract service agreement with Huron County Board of Commissioners uh, for the receipt, custody, and care of Huron County juveniles on behalf of the Seneca County Youth Center for 2023. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Commissioner Franker? Yes. Commissioner Schaff? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. The second resolution I have is entering into an agreement with SafeBill Ohio LLC to perform building code services for commercial projects in Seneca County. 
like to make a motion for passage. I'll second. Okay, let's, let's talk about this yes. minute discussion. Uh, do you have anything to add? Or I'm not. I'm excited I'm to get the ball rolling on this. <laughs> okay, so the county, uh, the county will will front twenty nine thousand dollars for this. Correct. Okay, we're going to take taxpayer money and front twenty nine thousand dollars. We will then receive a fee. Explain the fee. For yes. Us so so everybody um, understands it, please. Permit fee. So the they will provide. Um, we'll give office space. Um, somewhere in the county and anyone coming to get a permit will go through there there will be a clerk there um, safe built collects 95% of the cost Seneca County will receive 5% of all of the fees um, and so that money will kind of just come back to the county and uh, but the 95 is because they're out doing the work in the county for us so, so we will get 5% of all the permit fees will come back to the county so just in addition, basically what Safe Build is currently, we use Richland County to do mm -hmm. all of our commercials. So basically, we're shifting gears and going with Safe Built uh, aspect. of just so everybody knows. There the will be. This is not, not effective new. tomorrow. Right. Uh, there is days. a yes. There's at least a mm -hmm. 60 day or more uh, note. We have to give 60 day notice to Richland, and then from there, um, we can start working now with Safe Built to get that system and that building uh, department kind of built here. Um, and we'll roll that out when it's when it's ready to go. But for now, Gamut, keep going to Gamut, Richland Gamut. County. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to get started in this process. Um, it's been a long time coming. Uh, it's going to be nice to have somebody that's here that's local that can answer questions, help our small businesses get up and running. Um, I know with the previous group that we uh, were with with Richland County, they'd be here one or two days a week. But um, I think this is going to help to make a more business friendly community here with uh, safe build and have some local accountability. So. I'm excited about this one. Yeah, I think we should thank Richland uh, for uh, their service. I know they host uh, our uh, Ohio Public Works. They manage that with uh, our issue one money. We go down there and, and they do a nice job. And um, and yeah, we've had the reason we're doing this is we've had some concerns and, and some contractors came to us. And and, uh, and by the way, I believe the two cities will be. Uh, have they taken action or are they, they going to follow they us? They will. We'll follow. Um, we'll do another resolution. The city of Tiffin does not have to do the resolution because there's already stuff on site saying whatever the county does, the city of Tiffin follows. Faustoria will have to pass so this pass is kind of, This is county only action, but we're hopeful and that this, I we, spoke with both and they're all excited for this. and Tiffin will come in mm -hmm. as part of it. Yeah. I know one of the mayors reached excited. out to us personally. And, and all those yes, fees will excited. be part of the county. Uh, the structure collection. Okay, hearing nothing else, let's take a vote. Roll call. Roll call. Yeah, Roll there call. you go. Commissioner Franker? Yes. Commissioner Schaff? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think that's the first time I said to you. I don't know what I was thinking. Thank you. All right. Next. I just want to make sure you actually yeah. know this. No, I thought good. you used it. I wrote it down. Keep me straight. Thank you. And the last resolution I have is a resolution for the appointment of special counsel for the Seneca County General Health District retroactive to January 30th, 2023. Uh, they are hiring a, looking to hire a environmental law uh, counsel, special counsel for them. Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve this. I'll second the motion. Discussion. Any, uh, any comments? We good. This, this is their choice. Their, their choice. Uh, they, health uh, department uh, uses our prosecutor. Uh, we use the prosecutor. There are occasions where a uh, county entity needs a specialist, whether you know it could be environmental or uh, labor or whatever. And, and this is not uncommon. So the health department has requested uh, this. Well, and I think they already have had one, but they're just changing their first change yeah, and they're changing for so it. It's not like it's anything good additional. It. It's just Derek's good with it. So Derek them. has approved, yeah. Yep. yep, Derek's approved. So roll call. Commissioner Frankert? Yes. Commissioner Schaff? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Okay. Uh, at this time, we open the floor up to public comment. Uh, and if anyone here would like to speak, I'm, you know, just because I'm looking at you doesn't mean mm -hmm. you have to speak, but you're welcome. Uh, start with Adam. Adam, anything? Nope. Well, you look so nice, you should he get does. up in front of the camera. <laughs> right, exactly. That's, that's exactly when I shouldn't have been in front of Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any, anybody from the mental health board want to say anything? 
You guys good? Thanks for coming. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Tony, anything? You okay? Mr. Bradenbaugh? Okay, Jimmy, we'll open it up yeah. to public comment. Anyone online? Yep, I haven't seen anything in the chat, but if you'd like to come forward and speak during public comment, you can unmute your line and do that now. Okay. So hearing no uh, public comment, uh, we will adjourn the meeting. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>